almost Thomas the Tank Engine because the kids absolutely <laughs> thrash it. <laughs> thrash it. It's just, <laughs> you know, 54 foot front is enough, but 132 feet at the speed these kids drive, that's the only one. We just want to push the hobby and say mm. to people, you know, you know, just because we love steam engines, it doesn't exactly. mean that we're locked into steam engines. I mean, I've got five of the real the real things, but yeah. I've also got five diesels, mm. and I preserved all the electrics. So I'm just passionate about railways, and it's railways have been fantastic to me over my career. So between July the 26th and September the 2nd, another giant double gauge model railway is to appear as a semi-permanent exhibit at Chester Cathedral. Making Tracks 3, the brainchild of Pete Waterman and his dedicated team of volunteers. And uh, he joins us today to discuss the build. So, uh, Pete, thanks for joining us. A pleasure. So, uh, less than two weeks to go. Is the new layout ready? I'd love to say, yeah. Uh, no, it's not. Um, it will be. Um, we're 99.8 there. We still have got to prove all the block systems and, and, and the signalling. Um, we've still got some overhead wire to put up, that, but that's that's now only a minor part of it. So, yeah, the, this year's was a bigger task than we actually thought it was going to be um, because of the complexity of the actual project at Milton Keynes. The overhead catenary in itself has been a mammoth, mammoth task, which we literally didn't envisage. I and mean, we didn't realize that the difference between BR, the original BR overhead and UK one is so, so different. It's so much more work. Um, we just really did not really pay much attention. You know, we just thought, well, Instead of doing the V, we had to do a pole. Right. Uh, it's not that easy. It it was a lot more complicated than we thought making the actual, the, you know, the droppers. So, so, so that for, people took us that longer. for people that haven't been following this build, what's different this time? Because in the past it was high speed mainline running. This time you've gone for a station. Is that is yes. that for entertainment? Well, well the criticism we, we had from a lot of people was, uh, well, there's another station, and it's like it can't be a model railway if it doesn't have a station. Not that I believe in that philosophy at all. Um, so it wasn't the station as such that, in the end, I sort of said we'll build a station. It was the fact that Milton Keynes fits perfectly into our idea of what we we envisaged as a model railway exhibition, uh, and that was. Fast trains, fast, you know, moving all the time, lots of trains, giving the, the public the uh, tablets so they could run the trains. And the thing that I feel, thought, and I've watched over the two series we've done so far, the thing that the public really love are trains passing at speed. Mm. It's like, it's for kids, it's absolutely amazing. You know, they get all excited. And I thought, well, what if four trains passed all at the same time? So you could pull a train into the bay at Milton, you know, into one platform, six at uh, Milton Keynes, and put one through 125 on five, while you've got one on four going one three. So mm. potentially, I've never seen that done. So bi-directional running is like, I've never seen it. So it's like, that's interesting. That's real movement, where one's pulling up, one shooting through 125 miles an hour. Um, and that's, you know, and, and the, the I guess Rod, Rod Stewart sort of had a lot to do with it because I, his layout with the big, tall buildings intrigued me because I'd never, we'd never done skyscrapers or, or, or buildings like that. And I thought, well, modern buildings, you know, with the, with the glass windows, this, kids see them every day, they take it for granted. Uh, let's do it this way. So, so the build of the model has been documented by Megapoints, whose products have been used in the build. 
um, and I'd recommend that uh, our viewers take a look at that because uh, it's been it's been sort of following the progress of the build. Is the control of this model as complex as the two previous iterations? Has it taken longer to build, or have you learnt lessons from the previous two? Well, some lessons we've learned, yeah. And I mean, a couple of criticisms, uh, which are justifiable criticisms if you don't know the reason why we do it. You know, a couple of people said our points should be longer. Um, you know, to, to get a, sl a flirt. But the whole point of the layout was the layout is based on everything you can buy from your model shop. Right. Nothing's handmade other than the scenery. So all the all of the end, all the locos, all the stock is off the shelf. It's the same as all the trackers. And then deliberate. In in the fiddle yards, it's all Hornby. And then on the main street, it's all Pico. That was quite deliberate. Because we didn't want to say to people, you can do this if you couldn't. Because you know the skills of building points, so that so that was the only compromise we did. It had to be off the shelf. Mm. We could do the container and all the rest, but kids had to be able to go and buy one and make it work. So um, yes, we learned lots of lessons, uh, but the electronics this time, um, we 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 definitely had a rethink on the whole electronic side. Last year it was too elaborate. Looked great, but nobody really took any any interest in it. So we've done it slightly different this year in that it's not as elaborate as last year, but it's more real than last year. In other words, because it's bi-directional, when you change the point, you will see the route change. So the operator will see where he's going to go. Right. And, and he has to watch that because if he's because he controls two engines effectively, or two trains. One is going to park and one is going to put past. So he has to see that once that's stopped, he's got the right through. So that's, so that's you know, so you've got all the blocks, but you've also got that he can actually see it. And also there's 32 signals, wow. all sequenced, all sequenced, and we've got two banner repeaters. You know, so, you know, we've copied... Milton Keynes signaling diagram, absolutely spot on. We haven't cheated in any shape or form. So we've taken one point out because it's it's not no longer used, and it just gave us an extra problem with visiting um, operators. It, it just created what we didn't feel was it was an, an unnecessary you know thing to do. Mm. Um, yeah, and so Dave at Megapoint has been ma magic because he's brought this new system out which we are trying. So um, he's getting the, belly, the, the benefit of us trying it. And we're getting the benefit of him because he only lives down the road, can pop down if we have a problem and sort it. So in in some ways, although Dave is, obviously we, we want slightly different sometimes to what Dave's customers want, it's a, it's a good partnership because he can come and play with the trains himself. And, and Dave's a great operator. I mean, at the cathedral, Dave is one of the top operators. I mean, he can tail chase like nobody else I've ever seen. You know, D D Dave will absolutely go bang on the signals, mm. but all at flat out 125. And he's one of the only ones that can do that. That's how good he is with his electronic controls. Now, rumour has it you're quite interested in uh, overhead catenary now. Uh, what, what's that all about? Well, yeah, I mean, yeah, um, I find it fascinating. Uh, I think, you know, the one thing before lockdown, when we, we were asked to do this layout, I wanted, it would have been totally easy to build Leamington Spa 2, you know, in, in double O. I've got all the plans and I've built it once. But I wanted to build something that you can see now. And the overhead catenary is part of the railway. And it gives you a height. It gives you, you know, it gives you a depth that nothing else does. And once you get into it, it starts to get intriguing. You know, it starts to get interesting. And uh, so we're lucky in that one of the members knew the guy that did all the overhead was the chief designer. That and he's retired. So he, you know, comes along 
uh, as a volunteer and helps us out. But his knowledge, you know, he will look at something and go, why have you done that? Well, because of this. No, 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 no. This, um, that is fascinating. Mm. You know, where you, you've literally got a guy whose life was designing it in the real world. So, for instance, a little, little thing that I'd noticed from a, a, a field trip, it, it was actually a visit to the pub at Acton Bridge, but I will call it a field trip. Lo loosely inverted commas. Yeah, yeah I, I never saw. Yeah, we noticed that the, the droppers and the over, uh, the over right line were green because it's got verde green because they're copper. Mm. But it wasn't on the main line, right? And I couldn't work that out. So I, I said to John, you know, well, we've, we've, we've painted them green. He said, oh, well, it would have been green on the slow, but not on the fast. I said, why? He said, well, we replaced all the fast with modern overhead catenary. He said, well, we didn't do the slow. Mm -hmm. He said, we replaced all of the arms with aluminium arms, not copper. He says, and originally they were painted silver, but the drivers complained that they glinted in the sunlight and we had to change them and paint them black. Now, that's the sort of knowledge you don't read in books. No. So when you're going to the detail we want to go to, it's, you say, well, we have to paint them black because the drivers would have complained. And when they built Milton Keynes, it's all black because it's all modern catenary. Now, the problem that gives us is as an operator, you have a difficulty to see the wire and you tend to go like that and you go, oh, you know, you suddenly find you, yourself in a spider's web of overhead wire. So, oh, yeah. It's a bit of a balance. So, I mean, the layout's got some really impressively sized buildings. Um, very rare to see them this large on a, on a model. Um, the station itself is a, is a work of art. So how were those made? Right, so we decided that the station had to be scale. Okay, that we've we made that decision. If we're going to build Milton Keys, it had to be scale. So we couldn't compromise on the actual station. So the platforms had to be scale length. So we downloaded Google Earth and we printed it out in double O. And it's massive, I think. <laughs> it's massive. So then we did all the track plans. You worked out where we where we because we had to slightly change the way you enter and leave. And I'll explain that in a second. But when we got that, we realized if we wanted a station building at the back, we had to shrink it slightly because the road's double road. So we use a single road instead of a double road. And that allowed us to bring the buildings forward by one road, if you like, one, one car length. And that allowed us to build those stations. What we didn't notice was that when we'd gone to Milton Keynes and we'd photographed, we'd photographed this new car park, which is amazing because it's got all the little squares. Of course, Google Earth, it wasn't on. It wasn't on Google Earth. And so I, I said to somebody, oh, you know, it's great, but that car park, the new car park, is on Google Earth. Three days later, it was on Google Earth. Really? Wow. Yeah, so, you know, Big Brother is watching. Yeah, yeah, yeah. oh, yeah. <laughs> it certainly wasn't in between before we started taking pictures. Yeah. Um, but, it, yeah, so th that, the whole idea would be that you, as people stood this side of the layout, and look, you'd see the trains going through the windows. And that was the whole idea that you there's just be a massive movement, you know. And uh, one of one of the things I've come to appreciate in the videos, though, is is the number of model cars that are going to feature on this layout. I mean, I saw there was a there was a clip of one of your members painting some by hand. Um, yeah, that's they're not off the shelf Chris, items. Were they not suitable for for use to no, save time? No, there are no suitable modern cars. And. Uh, that staggers. So if you you know if you have a Porsche Megane, there's no model of a Porsche Megane in our scale. So we just made the decision that we've got to 3D print the lot. I mean, it was it was like we can't build a station and put out of scale cars on it, or cars that are forty years out of date. Right, right. So that was a. I wouldn't. I don't think. I would have gone as far as Chris has gone because he's got the silly lengths. I mean, he's the wheels and he's put the number plates on. I mean, he's been at this now for six weeks. Wow. 
Yeah, you know, that is, you know, that's a big task. Um, but, you know, that's what he wanted to do. Uh, uh, it's, it's, it, it pays off because when I, I saw it yesterday for the first time, we actually added 100 cars. And I have to tell you, it changes everything because suddenly it becomes a model railway. You know, mm -hmm. there are, it's just cars because, you know, they all park at Milton Keynes to catch the train, which is my excuse why we've got no passengers, by the way. Because they've all parked their cars and gone to London or to, to Manchester. Um, yeah, so yeah, that it's that was a massive task. But I think you know we've not been frightened like with the signals. We've not been frightened to say we have to make signals now. We have to make our own. We can't buy them because well, th this is one of the things I wanted to ask. So so you're saying that you're trying to use as many items as possible from model shops, but. Are there items that you've really struggled to source from model manufacturers or suppliers that you've had to make, therefore, from scratch? Um, or did you find enough on the market to cover the majority of your needs? The, 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 the rolling stocks that, uh, and track work and things like that, no problem at all. Buildings, we, we have to make all our own. And we do that by scaling down off Google Earth and doing field trips like anybody else would. So that's quite, you know, it's a big job, but we've all got like, you know, we've got three laser printers, so we can, we can, we can do that very quickly. We've both got big, you know, Phil and I have got big machines, um, so that's not a problem. We've all got three D printers these days. Mm. Some of us got big ones, and some of us got, but we've got plenty of that. So it's it that that was not the problem. If you, you know, we and you know, we've always said to people, you know. If you want the catenary, please call us, and we'll 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 sort you out because it's only a press of a button, and then it's down to you to build it. But it, you know you can have the kits that we use. The problem, the, the the area we found a big problem was modern signalling. Modern signalling is a, is a, was we've had uh, absolute aspects signals up to now, which are fantastic, but we were with Milton Keynes, we're moving into a different era. So we can get away with a four aspect at rugby on one or two and on and um, um, you know, the first one, Watford. We can get away with four aspect signal. You can't now because it's all two aspect and lots of feathers, lots of um, banner repeaters. So this time we were forced to go down the route of making our own signals. And to be honest, I think the challenge was the part that was so exciting. You know, it, because if you look at real Milton Keys, there's signals everywhere. Mm. You know, there's signals everywhere. And it's like, when the lights are on, again, this is what we've learned from one and two, the kids love watching the, the colours change. Yeah, and the, and, and the signalmen that come, because we get lots of signalmen, always watching for mistakes. So they watch the sequence. So I remember going... When we first started with one to Dave at Mega Points and saying, Can you design us a system that does this? And then, of course, it got more complicated when we put the feathers in. We wanted the single flashing, double flashing. You know, nobody had done that. So Dave came up with that system. Mm -hmm. This year, we said to Dave, Now we want, because of course, you've got to remember, we haven't got the last signal, it's not the last signal. Because once you've passed it, you've got to have phantom signals putting the sequence back. Exactly. So, yeah. you know, that's, you know, when you go past it, it goes red. But then, of course, it has to cycle itself mm. and, and set all the others back, um, which it was a huge task. But then you've got your flashing, you know, your, your, your flashing yellows. Uh, and we wanted all that because, again, we found that that was fascinating to people. Um, in fact, I think it was one of the things, particularly the railway, you know, the railway modelers found as completely fascinating. And so this time, I mean, I've spent probably, I guess, seven days photographing signals at Milton Keynes Blimey. in precise detail. Mm. So everyone, and I mean, we've got all the shunt sign, we've got everything. There's nothing we haven't got. We've got all the stops, the shunt limits. And as I say, we've even got the uh, banner repeaters, which are on the wrong side of the signal. 
So you see a banner repeater when you work on this side of the layout, but on the other side, it's a proper signal. Mm. Now, I don't know anybody who's ever gone to that length. Mm. I wanted to go to that length because that's what the railway did. Yeah. Yeah, I remember us saying last year that uh, that most visitors to the cathedral weren't actually modellers. Um, so, so what's the most frequently asked question that the visitor tends to ask? How long did it take? <laughs> you know, when you tell them it's 32 weeks, they look at you as if you're a liar. You know, it's like, yeah, right. You know, no, we get 32 weeks, that's it. You start to finish, we're in here on the 24th to put it up. It takes us two days to assemble and test. That's it. We don't, you know, we can, we can, add, them, we can add some overhead wire at the last minute. Well, we have to because it's a breakdown layout, of course. Mm. So, you know, the, the bits between the joints, we can't add till we get there. But that's that's the most frequent question. Um, we don't get many people asking us how much it cost. Oh, I don't think I don't think I've been asked that much. Um, Probably just as well. <laughs> well, the, the truth is, you know, it's not, you know, if you're buying, I mean, we've got four, four sets of pendolinos. You mm. know, they're not, it's not cheap. No. You know, and this is the generosity of all the sponsors, you know. Mm. Um, I mean, last year we were over 55,000 visitors. You know, it's 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 great for the hobby. Mm. And we see that because the younger guys go and buy something from the shop, for, you know, from, from Chester Models to take away with them. So we know, I mean, the 805s last year created a sensation. They created a sensation. I mean, Paul had got them in. Hornby had sent me my set. And we had them running. We didn't, we didn't limit them. They were the only trains we had on the layout that weren't limited. Everything else is limited to say 120, 90, whatever that they are. The 90s are, are, are limited to nine. We left the 805s. Boy, did they whip! Did they run? And I, they sold eleven sets, eleven sets, mm -hmm. purely because we're there, and the kids could watch these trains. Fly. I mean, they flew through them. Particularly when Dave was on the controls at Mega Boys, he was sending these things down, and, and and they just they never fell off. Yeah. I mean, you know, we're running eight hours a day, six days a week, and the the first Pendolino we ever had, which is a nine car set, has now done three hundred and forty real miles, and all we've ever done is clean the wheels. Mm. And they, they they rang us this year and said. Did we want a new set? We said, no, we're quite confident we'll do another 20 miles this year. Yeah. I mean, some days the locos are doing a real mile. And we've only found one engine out of all this time. We've only had two failures. One was Thomas the Tank Engine because the kids absolutely <laughs> thrash <laughs> it. <laughs> thrash it. It just, <laughs> you know, 54 foot front is enough, but 132 feet at the speed these kids drive them, be, that's the only one. Yeah, We had a couple of 90s strip some gears, but that was because of the length of our trains. You know, yeah. We're running 30, 30 boxes on the back, up up that hill at, at Rugby. Was it was a huge task. And that's all we ever had. So, so what actually happens to the layouts, the previous layouts, uh, after the exhibit? Are they dismantled and parts reused? Right, well, I can tell you now that... So every Sunday night, I blog on Rail Nuts. It's like every week, I take every picture we do of the week and we put it on off Sunday night. We put 10 pictures up to show what's happened that week. And we've got an enormous amount of followers and really fabulous uh, response and, and backwards and forwards. So that's been making track three now for the last 37 weeks. But next week or the week after when we open, we start making tracks four. Uh -huh. Making tracks four is the ultimate because making tracks four will be all three layouts in one straight line, which is a, a thing I alluded to earlier, which we didn't talk about. When we design Milton Keynes, if you see the real Milton Keynes, you come in and out. That wouldn't work at 170 feet because mm. it would just be a straight line. So we designed it so that you came in like that to Milton Keynes and went out. So if you're going through at 125, it's, it will it weave all the way through the station. And I promise you, it sounds fantastic. We've not yet put all three together, by the way. And we've got lots of problems doing it. 
for instance, you cannot see the other person that's operating your bundle layer. Yeah. See, so we've got to wear colour vests. You've got to have headsets because you can't see 155 feet. Yeah. So we think we can make it work. We've checked it technically with the Wi-Fi. We can make it work. We know they all join together. But when we join, we haven't yet tried this year's. Um, I, wonder if go got a, I wonder if Chester's got a town crier that could just, you know, oh, oh yay, oh, yay. <laughs> Well, this, this will be at Milton Keynes because that's the only place we can do it. We just want to push the hobby and say mm. to people, you know, yeah, we may be old now, but we're not all just, you know, just because we love steam engines, it doesn't exactly. mean that we're locked into steam engines. I mean, I've got five of the real the real things, but yeah. I've also got five diesels mm. and I preserved all the electrics. So I'm just passionate about railways and it's, railways have been fantastic to me over my career. And I remember the first, you know, show we went to, or I went to in 1952, was to the Jaguar Social Club Model Railway Christmas show. And I just remember the excitement of seeing all this move. And that's why I accepted the challenge of going to the cathedral, because I thought, you know, young kids are so busy on their tablets. What if we gave them a tablet with a real train mm. on the end of it? Mm. So they didn't see it virtually moving. They can actually see it moving. Absolutely. And, the, you know, the kids are unbelievable. They're better than most of us. Uh, uh, once you put that tablet in the hand, they haven't got a problem. Mm. They're brilliant. Well, I went last year and covered Making Tracks 2 for the September 2022 uh, issue of BRM and World of Railways TV. Uh, still available to watch and read as a digital back issue from World of Railways. There you go. It's my shameless plug. Uh, but I can highly recommend those watching to take a look this year too. Just a reminder, it's between July 26th and September the 2nd at Chester Cathedral. Pete, I mean, we could chat all day about railways, you know that. Um, but yeah, I've got to appreciate well, I look forward to today. seeing you at the cathedral. Yes, will do. See you then too. Don't worry, mate. Bye-bye. Enthusiasm for railways large and small? What a wonderful hobby this is. Why not do something about it? But where to start? How do you get to the heart of the hobby, get closer to the action at exhibitions, discover better ways of making things, new products, and go behind the scenes at some of the UK's biggest railway attractions? Simple, a membership that delivers all this and more. Get every new issue of BRM, Traction, Engineering in Miniature, Narrow Gauge World, and Garden Rail magazines before they arrive in shops. That's five magazines, and that's just the start. Access more than 800 back issues, with the ability to search for articles. A growing archive of track plans for project inspiration. Exclusive behind-the-scenes videos. Win big with our monthly competitions and gold membership to the online forum RM Web. Plus you get a free show ticket to one of our great weekends out. The Festival of British Railway Modelling, the London Festival of Railway Modelling, and Bristol Model Railway Exhibition. We think our digital subscription is the best, but don't take our word for it. Activate your no obligation free trial today and try for yourself. Simply give it a go and decide after you've sampled all the benefits. The ultimate digital subscription for the railway enthusiast, getting you to the heart of the hobby.